A.D. 2064. Planet Earth was on the brink of destruction. Clashes between the World Republic Federation and the various nations that opposed it sparked the outbreak of World War III. Weapons of mass destruction, deployed with complete impunity, raised the land in the blink of an eye. People believed it was the end of the world. The dire situation forced the two opposing factions to negotiate a ceasefire, reaching an agreement in only two weeks. However, the war may have ended, but its effects remained. With the deteriorating environment, Earth's population was drastically reduced. Those who survived the conflict lived a confined existence, trapped in underground cities. Countries joined together to form the greater United Nations and turn their eyes skyward to space. With the establishment of the USTA, or Universal Science and Technology Administration, man began to seek new worlds beyond the stars. A.D. 2087, the first year of the new space date calendar. Thanks to the success of Professor Trillis Bakhtine's warp drive experiments, mankind's dream inched ever closer to reality. The USTA secretly began to implement its SRF project, the Space Reconnaissance Force. Space Date 10, at last, the first official SRF mission. This moon base will be the start of our travels. <laughs> I bet they're rehashing all this stuff at the ceremony. All right, guess I better be going. Edge? I knew you'd be here. Boy, I just can't get away from you, can I, Raimi? How long do you think we've known each other? I know all your hiding places, Edge. Yeah, you've been hanging on to me for as long as I can remember. Remember how you'd always cry when I wasn't around? Sure took the fun out of playing hide-and-seek with you. Th that was ages ago! How long are you going to keep treating me like a child? As long as you're so quick to flare up like that, I guess. Uh... If you're here, I guess the departure ceremony's over, huh? Anyway, there's still some time left until we take off. I'm gonna work out a few kinks in the battle simulator. Uh, sure. Hey, wait a second! You skipped the ceremony on purpose, didn't you? Yeah, well... I thought I was gonna be able to meet a real hero. I might have gone if Commander Kenny was there, but Shimada's pontificating would just put me to sleep. That's USTA Deputy Director Shimada to you. Besides, I didn't want to see Crow gloating over his success anyway. It just really bugs me. And you call me childish. You just better not be late for launch preparations, you hear? SRF 001 through 004, commencing auxiliary engine power adjustment. Third you imbeciles! Complete. Are you trying to make me look bad? Stage activation. Sir, we're terribly sorry, Radio. sir. It won't Radio. happen Radio. again. Please accept our most sincere apologies. Moon Base Commander Stephen D. Kenny, reporting from Earth, sir. 
Ha! A rather leisurely return for the great Earth hero, Lightspeed Kenny, wouldn't you say? It hardly bodes well for the commander of such an important mission to miss his own departure ceremony. My apologies, Deputy Director Shimada. Truly, I am blessed with a superior of vast kindness and understanding to have been assigned trivial duties at a time like this. Hmm. Very well. I leave the rest to you. I'm exhausted, Commander. I had to oversee the ceremony in your place, you know. In any case, the guests seemed pleased. It made for a fine dawn to the age of space exploration. <laughs> <laughs> A number of governmental officials were expected to attend the ceremony, sir. The presence of the commander would have just been a distraction. I'm sure that was his concern. It doesn't matter. The ceremony is just a formality anyway. We'll celebrate their departure from here. Yes, their departure. <laughs> <laughs> 